Do you want to be a superhero? Well, you're not the only one. People all across the world are awakening to the power within themselves to create within this reality and plant seeds of change as they stand for tomorrow, today. This is Skull Babylon and you're about to listen to episode 66 of Paradigm Shift Radio, in which we welcomed on our super awesome guest, the Tea Fairy. With a variety of titles to her name, Tea Fairy is a playful spirit that helps remind us of the game we are playing and the choices we make to determine the roles that we embody. So whether you're a wizard, a warrior, a healer, all of the above plus more, remember that you are most definitely not the only one as we all continue to take steps towards becoming the psychedelic superheroes of the future. Like Facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Radio to stay in the loop and browse ParadigmShiftCentral.com for more inspirational media, knowledge, and tools, including the ever-popular shift buttons that you can use to serve as valuable items on your quest. Check out past episodes through the main website, tell your friends about PSR, go save a cat from a tree, and enjoy the show. What does it mean to be a superhero? We've all heard the phrase, we've all heard the stories. It means going out of our way to help someone else, someone who needs help. It means going out of our way to change who we are, not for other people, but for ourselves, so that we can become more efficient, more effective at being able to help those that we care about, and even to be able to help those who never never even asked for help in the first place. So what does it mean to be a superhero? I think if we look back, we can see plenty of examples of those before us. And yes, of course, we can think about the ones from the comic books and the Hollywood movies. But what about the real life superheroes? What about the people like Gandhi? What about the people like even Jesus? Are they themselves superheroes? And more than that, what does it mean to be a psychedelic superhero? Well, those will be some of the things that we'll be talking about here tonight live on another episode of Paradigm Shift Radio. This is your co-host Skull Babylon, a.k.a. Brendan Wolfshield Culleton, a.k.a. Skull the Wolf. And you're tuned in for another exciting, entertaining, inspirational, and enter- educational episode of Paradigm Shift Radio, as I said, presented on behalf of ParadigmShiftCentral.com. So, big shout out to everybody who is with us right now live in the live chat. And of course, anybody who is listening to the show, tuned in through whatever method that you are, please continue to help boost it. The show will be available after it is initially broadcasted, so anybody who sees the link afterwards will still be able to tune in and check out what it is that resonated, what it is that surfaced here through this uh, collective act of consciousness itself doing whatever it can to help wake itself up. Because essentially, that's really what we're trying to do here with Paradigm Shift Radio. This is purely just about practice. That's one thing that I always remind people. This is really just practice. This is really us being able to use our words, use our language to be able to explain this mysterious universe that we are in and also to be able to understand what we are capable of within it so if you have not yet please check out the main website at paradigmshiftcentral.com and you will see that paradigm shift central excuse me i was going i'm going to close my window slightly because there's like a huge storm outside the sky portals the sky portals opened up because they knew Paradigm Shift Radio was happening tonight, so got some lots of bonus energy <laughs> in the air as it is right now. But of course, ParadigmShiftCentral.com is a hub for a global collective of communities all across the world who are doing what they can to help educate and promote open-mindedness, healthy living, and the evolution of consciousness itself. So if you haven't checked out the main website, please do that. And more so than that, please be inspired to potentially get involved with what we are doing here through these communities. The show is is just a branch of this bigger project. It is something that we do once a week to be able to bring ourselves together, to be able to share updates with how things are progressing. And let me tell you, things things are progressing. Things are spiraling out beautifully. This is something that we've been working on for quite a while. The Paradigm Shift Project goes back to something that originated five years as a single club inside of my college with me and my buddies. And uh, through my involvement with television broadcasting and media theory and production, which is what I was going to school for, I used my skills 
my abilities to be able to help create this project that, that is now a global invitation for anybody to get involved with. So I will be giving a little bit of updates on just some Paradigm Shift community news for those of you who are just looking to be inspired by hearing about some of the recent things that have been happening and some of the recent Paradigm Shift communities to emerge. But we will be getting right into the meat of the conversation as we invite our guest for the episode, our wonderful guest, T. Ferry, on, and she will be talking to us about the tonight's topic, which is psychedelic superheroes. So, once we get there, I will be inviting other people to call into the show. And of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to PM, private message the Paradigm Shift Radio in the live chat and be able to send any questions that you might have our way. So just in terms of other new, in terms of the news and the recent news of Paradigm Shift communities that have been emerging, because if you check out the stuff that we've been going on the website, you know I've been putting up these videos about how to start a Paradigm Shift community. And the Paradigm Shift community is at a base level. There are Facebook Facebook page, but then they're also about organizing regular community meetings so that you can bring people in your community together to practice having conversation, much like what we're doing here, and to be able to make new friends, create like new, new, like to bond those neurons together and to be able to create new opportunities for you as a community to be able to reach out further to help change the lives of others, to help be the change that you want to see in the world. Fundamentally, yes, it all comes back to this idea of love and propagating love and, and being the change that we want to see in the world. And that's where through tonight's talk, we're going to realize that like there's a lot that we can do. There's a lot that we can change. There's, there's, there are some very interesting aspects to this game that we can tap into and uh, even some cheat codes, so to speak, that we can use to, to really optimize our efficiency within it. So if you check out the main website, you'll see a lot to do with the shift of ism and Shiftivism is the act of showing love to help awake to help assist in the awakening of consciousness. That's kind of one of the words that we've uh, invented here to help explain what it is we are doing. Us us shifters, and that's a, another word when we're talking about all this paradigm shifty stuff. So I mean that kind of just brings you up on the lingo right there. But please check out the Shiftivism videos, and you'll see that we are a lot to do with free hugs and getting people out and about in their community, and really just bursting that social bubble and getting people to just be like, wow, you know, like this is awesome. I've never seen people give out free hugs. And then they ask, hey, what's this about? And then you're like, oh, well, this is also a paradigm shift like community. Then we're trying to like get people involved. So you're invited to come out to one of our next meetings. So big shout out to one of the most recent communities that took action and did this just over the last couple of days. And that is Paradigm Shift Idaho Falls. And this is, again, they are a brand new community. They're less than like a week or two weeks old. And they are at facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Idaho Falls. So, of course, for anybody in their area, please connect with them. And, of course, if you want to check out if there are Paradigm Shift communities in your area, go to the main website. Go to ParadigmShiftCentral.com slash communities, and you'll see a full list there of all the communities all across the world that are there. And I think the thing that's really exciting about this, me and my buddy were sort of talking about this, this idea that – uh, the, you've heard the term like sleeper cells and, and I think what's more appropriate for what we're doing with the paradigm shift communities is that instead of sleeper cells we're like awakening cells so to speak. So all these different communities, some of them are larger than others, some of them are like brand new, but each of them has a potential to emerge, to grow into something beautiful. So if you find one in your community, then please say that you want to get involved or just come out to one of the meetings that they might be hosting, get involved, and uh, you'll be able to just get like in the loop and get involved with like all the awesome stuff that is happening through there. So another shout out to another new Paradigm Shift community that I am aware of is Paradigm Shift Zug Switzerland, or I presume I'm pronouncing that right, Z-U-G. I'm going to post a link for them in the live chat, and they are under the community directories as well. So I think that one in particular I'm really excited about. I know people in Switzerland are pretty open-minded. They they have a, a lot of stuff going on there. I mean, I can't really give you the details. Hopefully, we'll get our friends on from Switzerland into the, into the show on the future, and they'll be able to bring us up to speed. But again, just another example of the fact that this is happening. These communities are happening. People are being inspired. People are taking action and they're showing love and they're just creating those ripples that create waves. And in the process, they're continuing their own path to, to, begin, to, to continue to become more of who they are, their authentic, their authentic self, to, to follow that pursuit of um, 
doing what we can to be the best that we can be within this matrix. So, uh, you got, give me a, sh- can you guys just tell me, I mean, it's raining really hard outside. I, I'm just wondering if you guys need me to close my window more or if it's like a subtle ambiance that actually adds to the show. Uh, just give me some uh, feedback on whether or not I should close my window. I I'll need to know cause I can't tell. But uh, again, a big shout out to everybody who's with us in the live chat, big shout out to the paradigm shift community admins who are with us already. There's plenty of them there. You guys are awesome. And of course, if you want to become an admin, go to the main website, site, sign up to become an admin, check out the videos. It's an invitation. Anybody can get involved. So that's the gist of it. And that's really all the community news that we have for now. And at this point, we'll move right into what this episode is about. And that is really welcoming on our guest, T-Fairy. And T-Fairy, for those of you who have not come across her in the uh, wide midst of the internet, T-Fairy, as uh, her actual bio reads, which I'm just going to read. So the T-Fairy, writes stories, poems, movies, plays, essays, makes videos, organizes flash mobs, and is one of the founders of Prometheatrix, a big, beautiful Espelande camp at Burning Man. Excuse me. At various times, she has been a writer, a nanny, an actress, a flow arts teacher, childbirth doula, if that's how I'm pronouncing that, a homeless person, aid worker, live action storyteller, toy inventor, app designer, street performer, and party promoter. She also writes a column for the well known psychedelic information site eurowid.org, and a lot of you have probably heard of that site, and is a regular contributor, contributor to their subscription magazine, Eurowid Extracts. So, T. Ferry is an incredibly awesome person, and uh, I stumbled across her work quite quite some time ago, quite some time ago. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to have her on. And of course, check out her main website to connect with her. And that's tferry.org. And the way you have you spell that is T-E-A-F-A-E-R-I-E dot org. So big shout out to everybody here who T-Ferry already knows. And thank you for tuning into this episode if this might happen to be your first time. So let's get right into it. Let's let's boost each other. Let's share some educational discourse and let's just do what we can to uh, help save the world. So all right. So T Ferry, if you're ready, we are going to bring you onto the episode, onto the show. Here we go. Can you hear me? Yeah, sweet. Here we go. Hey T Ferry. Welcome to Paradigm Shift Radio. <laughs> cool. All right. Um sorry, can you just just uh okay, I'm just trying to get like a, an idea. We were testing the mics earlier, but please uh just introduce yourself to the to the people listening. Who are you? Who is the tea fairy in your own words? Oh wow, you just did the whole list there. Um Tea Fairy is actually a title, not a name. My rainbow and all of the girls who Hold on, I'm gonna have to uh I think the I don't know, we're we're just getting like bonus feedback there. You do have headphones on, though, right? How about this? Is that better? That might be better, yeah. I wasn't sure if there was feedback coming through there from lack of headphones or something. But, okay, try try again, and I'll cut you off if need be, but ideally I won't need to. So, But go ahead. I introduce just, yourself. You introduced me. I'm the peace fairy. I, uh, <laughs> I read a column for it. I've been speaking at a lot of psychedelic events and conferences. And, uh, cool. Okay, I'm. T- All right, I'm just. I'm still trying to get an idea of just like the technical to make sure that our mic is coming through. Okay, it's kind of like dropping in and out. I'm not too sure, but I do want to be able to. Um, okay, like I do want to get into this conversation here, but I just want to make sure that things are technically sounding okay. But uh. Yeah, so obviously, we'll just continue the conversation here, and then I'll make the decision, and then if not, T, can you call in using your onboard microphone? Because we were using that earlier, and that worked okay. And let me just check. For for people in the live chat, uh, you guys tell me, can you hear that, like, buzz coming in off her end? And if so, uh, is that too loud? So we're just going to have to check from people on their end. So I apologize, people, but we will just get this sorted out. So, But anyway, so, okay. Um, so yeah, was there anything more that you wanted to say to introduce yourself? Like you've given you've given lots of talks, like have you not? Like just presentations and different events. Hello, T Ferry, can you hear me? You know how psychedelic technology has gotten to be, and I gave a speech at uh, Evolver Baltimore thing like one week before 
the 2012, you know, the date. And uh, that was pretty fun, just talking about how hopeful I really feel about the future. And I talked to Amazon at conferences there. Mostly I just read for Airwood and, and uh, you know, talk shit. I'm going to be doing a couple of things this summer, uh, Rainbow Serpent, Cosmic Convergence, and the Boom Festival, you know, giving talks at big dance events. Cool, cool. Awesome. Okay, so um, people are saying that it sounds okay. I just want to... So people in the live chat, you guys just tell me, like, is it sounding okay? Because, like, for me, I just hear this buzz, and I'm just not too sure what it sounds like for our audience. But we'll just... We'll work through it, so either way. Okay, all right. Well, with that said, I mean, moving into the topic of of tonight's episode, the topic of, like, psychedelic superheroes, and, and what does that even mean, really? And I think the main thing that I, I want to be able to accomplish with this episode is even just to be able to redefine um okay, hold on, actually T Fairy. Um can we can we try calling in with the uh with your laptop? Can we try yeah, that? All right, right yeah, now. Okay, we're gonna do that. Okay, so I'm just gonna talk about some stuff for a second and then call right back in. So that's not a problem. Okay. All right, thanks. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, yeah, one second, guys. I I do apologize. I mean, this is just something that I want to make sure that it's working since we are going to be chatting for a little while. But, yeah, so, I mean, I know you guys were hearing that buzzing. I was hearing that, too. But, uh, yeah, and you'll also – you'll have to excuse me. You'll have to bear with me because, like, I'm, my throat's, like, still a little bit sore. So, I mean, I'll be, like, babbling on as much tonight, so to speak. Um yeah, and, and I'm not sure if I'm totally, like, coming down with, like, a bit of a cold or something, too, even though I just got over one. But, uh, I mean, even just, um, <laughs> even the topic of, like, self-healing and stuff, if I was thinking about that tonight, and it's just like, yeah, you know, like, I'm just going to make sure that I get my rest and do, like, some, like, hands-on healing to make sure that I can use my own super abilities to heal myself. Because, I mean, that's, like, one of the awesome things that we can talk about tonight is like some of the abilities that we have within this reality, some of the, like the latent abilities that we talked about really, uh, we referred to in the last episode, which was all about becoming psychic with our, our, our friends, our guests, Gianna and Genevieve Lightworker. And that's why after doing that episode, I was pretty adamant about inviting T Fairy on for this episode. Cause I figured it would be a nice segue into the topic of, uh, in addition to what we were talking about there, like becoming more psychic, like what can we, can let's, Let's take it a step further. Like, like, to really get into that of like using these abilities, these quote unquote psychic abilities, to like save the world, so to speak. Because I mean, essentially, that is one of the missions that that some of us, I think, many of us, have sort of like taken on this idea of being a superhero is uh, have creating a mission for yourself. So, like, what is that mission? Is it something as big as saving the world? Is it something as simple as just like helping your friends and being there to support your loved ones? But uh, again, we'll be talking about that. So it looks like T Fairy's back uh, in the queue. So I'm just going to bring T Fairy back on now. So T Fairy, if you're ready, just bringing you back on. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I think that's okay. That's I think that's a lot better. Um, All right. Yeah, okay. that's we, still we, fine. We were trying so fancy. We had this big fancy microphone. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. 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 That's true. You guys like I had a whole studio set up and everything, but back to the <laughs> basics. <laughs> Cool, cool. All right. Okay. So thank you and uh, officially welcome on to Paradigm Shift Radio now that we got things moving nice and smoothly here through the water. So, all right. <clears throat> so in terms of the topic of psychedelic superheroes, uh, as I was explaining, I think uh, something that I touched upon last episode was the idea of the word psychedelic and like, what does that even mean? And I think uh, given the history of the context of the word, a lot of people hear the word psychedelic and they think they automatically like their brain just thinks about like entheogens or like LSD and like tripping balls, so to speak. And, and even like quote unquote, like hallucinations, dot, dot, dot. But what I was expressing last episode is to me like psychedelic, even breaking it down to the epistemology of the word, like psyche and delos, psyche referring to like mind, like mind, spirit. mind manifesting, yeah, mind, mind manifesting, mm-hmm. either chemicals or, you know, ten, people tend to think psychedelic uh, drugs, as you said, but you could use, you know, you could say, oh, wow, that fractal screen saver is very psychedelic. It's yeah. Part of that general, um, Uber, or it's you know it's mind manifesting in some way or it's mind mind expanding in some way. 
Yeah, yes, like mind expanding, like consciousness expanding, like awareness expanding. Because like the psyche, like the psych- psychedelic, so psyche and delos, psyche referring to like mind, spirit, and delos referring to like sort of the God image. So to me, the basic, from from like as I'm using psychedelic from here out for the rest of my life, when I say psychedelic, like I'm referring to like the the state of a higher awareness of the connection between yourself and your surroundings so to speak. So, um, yeah, like, I mean, in that sense, like being a psychedelic superhero is like a person who is embodying the desire to help other people, but doing it from sort of like the bigger picture of like seeing themselves in others, um, sort of like having that, that namaste, the Ubuntu, like mm-hmm. I am because we are. So, but yeah, no T like in, in your, in your words, like what does being a psychedelic, what does the term psychedelic superhero, what does that mean? To you well um like you said i think that anybody can be a hero there's a lot of heroes you know just firemen and people working three jobs when they have cancer to feed their kids and you know people working to feed people and whatever i think of a superhero specifically as someone who is committed to saving the world you know who's committed to the bigger picture and uh for maybe people who do it through some sort of extraordinary means. It may not be like a mystical power or a psychic power, though it could be, but it could be just, you know, their amazing engineering skill. Like this guy can just sit down and hack out code in one night, but, you know, it's a superpower. <laughs> um, you know, people who bring their extraordinary abilities to bear in the purpose of saving the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's a, there's a great talk that you, I guess you gave it at Burning Man, right? Like the mm-hmm. hacking the game talk? Which was like mm-hmm. the most recent Burning Man that you were at, yeah, yeah. yeah which it's I mean, like in I mean, yeah, and we can, and I mean, I'm sure you know, if like we got some like sort of stories from that, we can sort of plug, like, drop those in throughout the episode as well, I'm sure. But the the speech, uh, the talk that you gave, you recorded it onto your YouTube as well, and I'll post your YouTube in the link for the live chat. Oh um, yeah. And then people can check that out. How do you, uh, so like, okay, your YouTube is youtube.com slash. I'm not sure how to pronounce. Like, how do you Ruth. pronounce that? Ruth Spieler. Ruth it's from Spieler. Child of Fortune. It's my favorite psychedelic science fiction novel. Oh, cool. Like Norman Spinrad. <laughs> it means sort of like storyteller in the streets. Okay. See. Okay. So yes, yeah, so again. Yeah. So T Fairy is YouTube for those of you just not like at like access to your computers. YouTube dot com slash Ruth Spieler R U E S P I E L E R and uh, yeah check out her video but, but there's a lot of stuff that that you bring up in that that I sort of wanted to reiterate to to practice. Oh, I love repeating. it. That's what yeah, I've been oh. thinking about a lot. I'm gonna be repeating it a lot. I'm gonna talk yeah. about this at Rainbow Serpent and at Cosmic Convergence and at Zoom Festival and everywhere I get a chance to this summer and winter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because like rep- that's you know repeating stuff is definitely something that I think is totally an awesome thing to do, and I sort of touched upon this last episode the idea that society is constantly like repeating the negative quote unquote things, just like the things that are bringing you down. So the way that we combat that is by repeating the positive things, so that we can boost and bring ourselves up, like as a collective, as anybody who's listening listening to the show. So I mean. Through the things that me and T Ferry and any of our guests who are going to be any of our callers who want to join us are going to be talking tonight. The intention is is that like these are some really cool ideas. These are some like awesome questions that you can sort of reflect upon within your own like within the game that you're playing right now, and just to like add a little bit more of a dynamic to to this reality. But yeah, like in some of the stuff that. Um, I'm just trying, I mean, with all the notes that I have in front of me and everything like that, like, T. Ferry, like, what, what do you feel, uh, just based on, like, the talk and based on, like, the theme of this episode, what are, what are some key, what are some of the key points that, that you think people should just, like, hear, so to speak, in terms of hacking the game and what it means to be a psychedelic superhero? Well, I, to me, I mean, I think that there's a whole lot of different metaphors that people can use for you know what is this entire situation when I talk about hacking the game I talk about the idea of imagining that this entire universe is like a massively multiplayer game and your higher self is the avatar and I mean is is the player and you know your ego is your avatar so you get to design your own character in it you know I don't know if you're a role playing geek but I was and uh (laughs) Yeah, and, you know, we've been doing these uh, 
superhero workshops actually where uh, me and my friend Reverend Alex and where we you know for a few days teach people to sort of you know make make a character sheet for themselves decide who they want to be and, and you know decide what kind of a not everybody identifies as a superhero you know some people think of themselves as a warrior as a bodhisattva or as a shaman or something else you know I always say I, I think of myself as a superhero because I don't understand what a shaman is that's not my native culture you know superheroes is the mythology that I imprinted on as a child so you know that's you know I'm more of like a Jedi matrix mm-hmm. superhero than you know shaman because I didn't grow up in the jungle and I, I don't really know what that's about I've seen some shamans in the Amazon who really are you know what I would think of as psychedelic in the you know uh, entheogenic sense of psychedelic superheroes who can, you know, come in after people and can, you know, really do amazing things with it. Can I wouldn't... I, I can do a little bit of stuff like that. I can do one, two, three, and we're back. I like to watch people. I'm a psychedelic voyeur. I've probably watched two or three hundred people over time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like even uh, what you said, you know, like when you when we think of superheroes, I, I think uh, the examples of like stuff that we see in the Matrix and and the Jedi's are are excellent examples of something that that we can sort of relate to, something that we can embody as well. Because I mean, obviously, like when you see the superheroes that we have in like comics and stuff like that, you sort of like see like you know Superman flying around and and like bending bars with his bare hands. And right. We're just like, oh, but like. I can't really do that per se, but then the something like the matrix where becoming a superhero for Neo was like this process of becoming like self-aware It was becoming aware of like the matrix of, of the game in itself. Well, this and is it. You know, you ahead, just back, ahead, like yeah. you said, kung fu movies or whatever, you become yeah, a exactly. superhero by taking on, you know, your martial arts training or whatever, by learning to flow with the situation, by learning to, you know, energetic disciplines and whatever um but yeah i <laughs> yeah go ahead if you got something i don't know i do <laughs> identify you know i do identify as a superhero i i walk around and try to you know every night in black rock city when i i go around and look for some kid who's maybe tripping too hard or something and, and i'm like hey my friend you know is there anything i can do to make your moment more blissful and and sometimes they're like, oh, God, you know, thank you. I just, I need to find my people or the porta potties or my camp or whatever. And I take them back and help them, you know, because I'm mm-hmm. I'm just a psychedelic superhero that shows up and says, hey, how can I, you know, <laughs> can I get your kitten out of your tree for you or something? And it gives yeah. me a little thrill to be that guy. But Yeah, like, absolutely. And, and that's where, like, I think a conversation like this is really applicable to the people who are listening because I I always say like it it's the little things that make a big difference in in, in this life and and being a superhero is, is and I said this last episode but I'll say it again because like being a superhero has like nothing to do with like a mask or a fancy suit or any sort of like super you know super super abilities like it really just has to do with like the love that we share and, and that's something that just like going out and about in your street and just like helping a person cross the road, like helping someone with their groceries or as something that we promote within paradigm shift one, like paradigm shift community is like giving out free hugs and something like that. Like something simple such as that can create just like a huge potential because you have no idea like what that one hug could mean to that person at that time. In the same way that kid who was like sort of quote unquote, like tripping, like how much that meant for someone else to like connect with them at that moment. Of course. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and I mean, like, and and especially, like, going back to uh, the examples of, like, um, of the Matrix and, and the Jedi, like, I think the Jedi, uh, it, it is something that we've talked about in the past, and, and I think it is uh, just, like, such a prime example to go back to, because, I mean, you know, what were the Jedis talking about? Like, they were talking about... I mean, I'm talking like, just coming... about the first three movies, right? This is canon. Oh. <laughs> Nothing else counts, right? Nothing else. <laughs> I don't know. But, but... <laughs> Yeah, you know, all like the, the force, kids right? grew up, yeah, wanting to be mystics. It had that kind of, you know, the the training and the, the like I said, the sort of sense of martial arts training and energetic training and spiritual training. And then the Matrix, you know, that generation grew up rejecting the program, like looking around going, wow, well, you know, may, maybe this is something that we can hack. Maybe this is some sort of an information 
space. Mm-hmm. We can get into that later. I think that it probably is. And mm-hmm. then, you know, like it says, the the Avatar kids, you know, want to plug into the AI. The Amazonian intelligence is real. It's there. It's about as real as you want it to be. You know, for such a crazy mechs versus dinosaurs movie, there was such an ayahuasca vibe in that. Um, and I think it would be interesting um, to try to get more shamans like from the Amazon and stuff to actually check that stuff out, you know, not instead of us learning their mythologies, but if they want to be our doctors and our ministers, like, it seems like it would be helpful to them to know what mythos is already in our head, like, where are Mm -hmm. these images coming from? How can Mm -hmm. you heal the Western mind if you've never seen, you know, internet porn, Mm -hmm. if you've never seen, um, you know, New York City or whatever? And it'd be kind of fun to have an exchange program where we could, you know, bring people who are interested out to kind of see mm-hmm. what magic we're working with when we see what magic they're working with and yeah. see what we could do with it together. Yeah. Yeah, like, I think um, for me, like, one of the big things in, in terms of, like, this this whole topic is uh, is that process of becoming, like, more self-aware. More self-aware of yourself, but also, like, more becoming more self-aware of, like, the system, like, the matrix, like, that we exist within. Because uh, the, thing, the thing that come that, like, that is this topic of, like, awakening of consciousness, like, is this idea, and I mean, maybe these are just my words, but is this idea that, like, this reality is, like, not as cut and dry as it appears to be. And obviously, like, um, psychedelic experiences that that we can have, like through the use of entheogens and stuff, will make that blatantly apparent to us. But I mean, the psychedelic experience when you're uh, in that place where you realize that like you're existing beyond your physical body and you're in like another dimensional space and you can like fly around and stuff. I mean, your dreams, like your dreams, are psychedelic experiences as well. And and, and understanding like what a dream is and how that relates to this reality. And the big thing that I tap into is that as you begin to become more conscious, as you begin to understand what dreams are, you understand that like within dreams, you have the power to create with your own mind. Like if you want to fly, you can fly. If you want to create an apple in your hand, you create an apple in your hand. And then in the same way, Mm -hmm. the big kicker is that we can create within this reality as well. Because of course, like, you know, people sort of say like this reality is a dream within itself like merrily 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 life is but a dream like in in the sense that we have so much potential to actually create within every moment with the energy that we put out with the thoughts that we put out and there's a couple things that i want to touch upon and i want to hear what you have to talk about yeah i've got a lot to say about this yeah yeah like i got some i got a really cool example of a way how we can like inject code into the matrix um through a personal experience that that i've worked with but i mean yeah like t what what are some examples of um, some of, like, the abilities, quote-unquote, that we can sort of experience that are kind of um, a result of the fact that, like, this reality is, like, more than what meets the eye, so to speak. Like, you know, like the energy healing and the... Yeah, hold on a second. Um, Go wherever you need to take it, yeah. What I was saying is about that was that, you know... most people really do, when it comes right down to it, seem to believe that this is not, in fact, a primary universe, like the one that we're taught about in our seventh grade science class. Mm-hmm. You know, the sacred writings of all the Levantine religions start out with the idea that the world is conjured from the word. A word, it just seems like suggestive of some kind of a coding enterprise. And, um, you know, most religious people say, well, they're habitués of some other order of reality. And they've somehow been, you know, exiled to this more ephemeral sphere and they hope to go back to, you know, this other dimension, to heaven. Or all of the Eastern religions have a meme that, you know, samsara, the world is an illusion. Um, And the hippie burner, you know, you were saying transcendental memes that seem to make more sense in an information-based or wholly magical universe do, you know, like the transmigration of souls, manifestation through intent, trance channeling, astrology, the existence of disincarnate entities, ritual magic, divination, astral travel, energetic healing, precognition, meaningful synchronicity, just to name a few, you know, the prayers and mantras and Mm -hmm. acros and, you know, like the acros that are like cheat codes you can call these guys. Or like, you know, how about the finely balanced wheels of karma? I don't necessarily believe in all of those things or any of those particular things, but if you believe in any of them, You know, think about how much more likely it would be for those things to be so in 
a game or a well-designed simulation than it would be in just a random, you know, confluence of physical laws. If it was just, you know, rocks knocking off of each other, how does the story value come out of it that is so strong? It it seems to be evidence to me that it is art in some sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I don't know, there's a a logic, like a thought experiment that seems to show that if a believable matrix universe is possible at all, that this has to be one, right? So the short version goes something like this. We have gone from, like, Pong to running around, and I'm 40 years old, I remember Pong, okay? (laughs) And from, to, like, running around inside of a movie in my lifetime. I saw the intro to some video game commercial a couple days ago, and I thought it was a movie. And... If we didn't blow ourselves up for a thousand, thousand, thousand years of accelerating, accelerating technology, which this is a long shot, okay? But it doesn't seem unlikely to make a simulation eventually that could fool such as arose within the damn thing, you know, that an ancestor simulation or historical variation or something. And as soon as we turn on the second ancestor simulation or whatever then those things are going to outnumber prime universes two to one, right? So there's already more of them than there are prime universes. But, like, we could see, what, like 300 billion galaxies from here, so, like, lowball it to 100 billion. And every one of them's got, you know, lowball it to 100 billion stars. So if every galaxy of 100 billion stars was so pathetically life poor that it only had one species, that was capable of and willing to do something roughly isomorphic to what we're talking about, build a matrix universe. You know, if there was only one per galaxy, then for every mm-hmm. real base frame universe, we'd still have 100 billion of them if they can't form inside of each other. We're trying to build one in here. So I think there must be so many more simulations than there are real universes. Like, what's the odds we're in the bottom one? And I think this is such a hopeful thing, you know, because it leaves room for all of that. It leaves room for the possibility of manifestation and karma and story value and synchronicity and whatever. Um, but in a way that instead of making, you know, casting us as the sort of playthings of a jealous and capricious God, it makes us the center of the story. We're the players. We're who this thing is by and for and about. You know, we're the storytellers. We're the starring actors. You know, we're the audience. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I like the idea of, um, like, you know, become your own hero. Like, you are the main character in the story that you are creating for yourself. And even just you going back to the idea. You might, yeah, you might, yeah, why should, I, why should someone else be the main character? I'm always here. Sometimes y'all go away. I don't know. I don't believe in the rest of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, like, I think. It's so cool when people start to go through that process of awakening and, and, and begin to, like, see uh, the universe, like, in their surroundings and stuff and begin to experience things like synchronicity and begin to, like, have the universe communicating back to them, like, from what feels, like, outside of themselves. And that's oh, where, like, yeah. I got, like, a really cool example yeah. with that. But, I mean, yeah, like, in terms of, um, like, some of the, you know, if, if no one's, like, ever listened to this show or has ever really heard any of this stuff before, like, in terms of some of the abilities that, that we have within this reality, like, as, you know, if you, if you want to use the terms, like, superhero or not, like, as people in general, uh, I think even just looking at something, like, as simple as, like, energy healing, it's just, like, such a miraculous thing, and it's something that, like, I've definitely had experience with I, as well. I saw that I mean, superhero stuff, you know what I mean? Using something stuff, that's... Yeah. The, extraordinary power to heal to yeah yeah but then understanding that it's not like extraordinary at all well, i don't think like, it's supernatural i think supernatural no, yeah. is a dull word a null word i think yeah. that, that yeah. you know it's just something that to most people would seem like a superpower because you know anything uh sufficiently what is it is indistinguishable from magic it's if you just don't understand how it works mm. um Oh, but yeah. anyway, I, I started coming on to this whole uh, virtuality trip after an ayahuasca trip, or sort of during it. And, um, you know, Mama comes on like a sentient browser program, and she is like, I'm now scanning you for patches, viruses, updates, cookies, you know, before logging you on to hyperspace proper. And this, I mean, that's my translation, I should say. It wasn't in English, but this is what I was getting with all the whole Tron visualizations and everything. And then it was like, eh, 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 
there. We found some malware that you picked up from. It's a, <laughs> no, it's palpable sense of professional contempt from the Ayahuasca Institute. Like, don't you know that you're using an insentient browser and it doesn't give a fuck about you and sites you're visiting or leaving cookies all over your shit, you know? <laughs> and, no kidding. I mean, I'm not going to point out any particular sites I've been visiting, but, you know, beware. And so this wasn't a problem. You know, this Ayahuasca found the, isolated the virus and purged it with my the remains of my late lunch. And then she, the maestro who was watching this go down, who was a psychedelic superhero, came over and she started singing what I took to be a security update on me. And I could, this little old South American lady is using her voice to manipulate a graphical user interface. Hmm. Through the Icaros, right? Is that what you're referring yeah, to? Yeah, she was singing yeah. it and you could see it being made and then she was moving pieces of it around like with her voice. <sighs> and and uh, you know, and then she had done something to sort of keep the looky loos out, you know, the kind of keep everything out of the space. And and I and I, you know, that she was lighting the stage, or she had this stuff, and it's like, oh wait a minute, these guys aren't afraid of smoke, you know, that she's doing this like moving an icon, she's setting the permissions on the room, and it just suddenly like fell all the way through. Well, how could you set the permissions on a real room? <laughs> and, uh, we have no idea how many levels in we are. <laughs> like I said, it's yeah. great. I think this isn't... People get in this really Gnostic idea about this. Well, like, oh, no, we're trapped in, you know, the computer at somebody else's. I think this must be, you know, for us. Definitely, I think that yeah. this... You know, maybe this is just how baby gods evolve. We've almost got a nervous system. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, just taking a step back, someone was just asking in the live chat as to what an Icaros is, uh, from basically Hello? my basic understanding. Uh, like Icaros, Icaros is a, it's a song, like it's a traditional song that can be used traditionally during ayahuasca ceremonies, and the intent behind the songs is actually to help guide people like through their internal journeys. Um, was there anything? Um, can you tell? Or, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, they yeah. have that, and you know, they they seem to just download them. Um, I had it happen to me yeah. once, crazy story, but they, and then, you know, they teach them to just their students mostly. It's kind of this thing where you pass these things down, and some of them are just general guiding songs, and some of them are really specific, like this helps heal sick babies or whatever, and some of them are, I guess, really, really specific, like this one calls these three guys on a boat or whatever that, you know, is like the phone number to some thing in the ayahuasca verse. I've never, I can't stamp that. I've never had that happen to me, but I've had it explained to me that way by a few people who claim to do it every day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I, I think, uh, yeah, like, I mean, through, you know, just touching upon, like, the idea of, like, the ayahuasca ceremonies and stuff like that, like, I like I like how uh, you continue to use, like, the metaphors of, like, digital vocabulary to sort of, like, refer to the psychedelic experience or just, like, life in general, because, I mean, I think, uh, again, going back to what you're saying, like, uh, comparing life to a massively multiplayer online game, like, that is something that I'm definitely all about, because <clears throat> even, the, like, the idea of, like, leveling up and, like, a game... Dude, you like, know when you level. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, accessing <laughs> new, new the skill branches. Um, yeah, yeah. But, well, I mean, yeah, I like... Mean, it's I, a bit of school ahead, or test or trap or prison or whatever, if you're going to metaphorize about it. You know, people started off... With like, okay, you know, the universe is a family and the kids are, you know, we're the kids and God's the emotionally abused, I'd be dead with a different problem. And everybody knows what that means, you know. And so if you're, you got to follow his rules and you got to like it. And so if you're going to make a choice, you're probably going to do this. And, you know, it's gotten to like a lot of people say, oh, the universe is a school. We're here to learn, you know. It's a test. We're here to you know, it's a prison. It's a it's a massively multiplayer game. Is a pretty positive one. You know, it's it's, yeah, yeah. it's something that really puts us in the center of it, and it gives us an opportunity to sort of decide what we want to play for. Mm-hmm. You know, not everybody wants to play for the same thing. People want to just see the most of the map that I can see. Some people just want to have the most offspring. Some people want to die with the most toys. You know, they want to have the most political effect. You can you can play mm-hmm. for whatever you want. Um. Yeah. That's a and, super, super plan for saving the world. 
<laughs> yeah, that's definitely. I mean, yeah, my mission, my mission is, is to do that, is to like help awaken consciousness and 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 my superpower. I mean, because you know, people might have seen a post I put up earlier. Like, I since I since I sort of saw you using the term psychedelic superhero, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, like you know, like I, that's definitely something that I resonate with. And and before, like I, it, I actually like thought of myself as carrying like the similar role of a superhero for for quite some time, for almost like the past like for three, four years now, and even, like, the name, like, Skull Babylon, like, is an homage to a character from a comic book called Transmetropolitan, and the character in that is called Spider Jerusalem, and as a character, he exists, like, in a futuristic dystopian future, um, and his superpower is journalism, like, that's what <laughs> he uses, like, that's, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't have, like, any flying right. abilities or anything, so I'm just like, right. I'm like, heck yeah, like, that's something, that's something tangible, that's something I can do, and, and then I just sort of, like, adopted that mentality, and then uh, continue to do that, continue to use my super abilities, which are something I chose for myself, something that I have like the gifts and, and, the, and the, the skill sets that I spawned into like this, this video game with. And I think um, going back to like what you were talking about earlier, I think it's really important for us to be able to like almost uh, like you literally say, like to create like sort of a, a chart to, to map out your skills and, and get an idea of like who the character is that you are, because not all of us need to be like this, like one ideal image. Like the fact is that all of us come in with our own individual gifts, our own individual skills and talents. So, I mean, yeah, some of us are like the magicians, some of us are the mages, like some of us are the warriors and some of us are like anything else, but to be able to get, get an idea of what it is, who it is that you are, and then to continue to grow upon that. And, and there's a term that, that you, uh, that you use in, in one of your talks, like the term like avatar, like avatarism. And if I can just like explain that like real quick, like the way how I would explain it, like avatar in a traditional sense refers to it kind of goes back to like Hindu like philosophy and, and stuff. It refers to like a deity, like an actual like god incarnating into yeah, our human experience. So like I mean, in, an avatar. yeah, yeah. But I think it's really cool if we can sort of like see, you know, like look at your life kind of like from a step back, like sort of like be the observer of yourself instead of just being so caught up in everything you're doing to be like more like a, like be more of the observer of your thoughts, the observer right, of your of actions. You're more of the player. Like, you're more of the guy that's, that... They call it yeah, an avatar like, games too, like in Second Life or World of Warcraft. Exactly, you know, that's yeah. your avatar and you're the god. The and the yeah. character, the, you know, you're the instantiation of you in this universe. And you identify, when you identify with the player self, and that can be at any level, you know, that can be your individual spirit, or you can identify with the player as the guy in Locust playing for evolution, or you can identify with the player as, you know, your own unaccessible, unconscious, or whatever, you know. Then your ego suddenly, you don't identify with it as much. This is the character that you're building, and it turns out that it's extremely... Mutable, like you can really change yourself a lot, even as an adult. Um, I've really seen it and seen it. Um, you know, like I said, we were running these superhero workshops, and people would make character sheets for themselves. Like, and then when Christianity, I mean, I'm just saying Christianity because that's the one that I grew up with. There's this bit with like, you know, baptism and confession and whatever, where it's like, okay, we're gonna give you a start over. You know, you just change all of your stats to the, match those of this one guy. You know, Jesus is the the one true character template, and you try to be like this guy. Mm-hmm. And we're, you know, you say that you're going to change, you're this asshole guy, and now you're going to be different. And we're all going to believe it. We're going to buy it. We're going to uphold you. We're going to say, all right, now you're going to be this. You start to fall out of character. We're going to help remind you of who you want to be. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we've kind of lost that ritual, and I was talking to Lincoln Norte, I was saying, you know, people should try to use Burning Man for this or try to use yeah, their festival spaces. experiences and these mm-hmm. spaces for this to really commit to their character and say, okay, now here's the demarcation. I'm going to be this guy. You know, make a new name for him. Tell your, get your team to uphold. Tell them all about who you're going to be now and make them uphold you and, you know, agree to uphold them. Mm-hmm. That's how you get super teams. And like, it's really, you know, I'm not talking about getting in latex costumes and trying to fight crime. <laughs> you know, this this sort of thing is gets dubious media attention. But like you said, you know, 
I think manifestation is a superpower, right? Absolutely, I feel like yeah. there's something that we could really do um, together with that, actually, if we could get enough of this sort of avatar superhero activated, go activated, however you say it, mm-hmm. you know, community on it. Um, I don't know what your experience of manifestation and synchronicity is. Um, well, that's what I was, I was going to talk about that, yeah. Was... Mine's really extraordinary. Yeah. And uh, I feel like there's a few basic principles to it that, you know, we really can teach people how to hack this game, you know, if it's a mm-hmm. if it's a massively multiplayer game or if it's just information-based. And, again, I don't think we're in a computer like World of Warcraft writ large or something. This could be it's billions of times more sophisticated than anything we can make right now. It could be divine, yeah. sent, quantum, holographic, extra-dimensional, <laughs> just plain magical, something that we don't have a word for. But somehow it's a system that processes information. Somehow you can upload your will and intention to it, and it, you know, it has some effect on the way that it comes down. Mm-hmm. What's yeah. your thoughts about that? Oh, definitely. Like that's definitely something that it wasn't that obvious to me growing up. It wasn't until I started sort of going through my own awakening process that I started to just have like circumstances of synchronicity that were or, or just circumstances of manifesting that were so blatantly apparent that like I couldn't ignore them at that point. And and I began to realize that like there's basically this idea that there's us who are walking around in our body, but then understanding that we're actually multidimensional beings from the way I would explain it is an understanding that we actually exist like beyond the present moment. So, I mean, where we project our thoughts to, like we're actually like projecting, we're visioning, like visioning is such a key word. We're visioning the reality that we want to see ourselves in. And then our job from there is to like meet ourselves like halfway like down the road and and to be able to have the universe communicate back to us and and I do want to get into that I want to get into like um some practical magic so to speak and and, and ways that people can actually work with manifestation and like communicating uh out with the universe outside of themselves um one thing I was just going to kind of go back to like the idea of like creating a character and everything I think that's something just to reiterate that, that for for everybody who's listening to this and even just what T was saying you know if we can get like a global team of people who who are activating this this superhero in themselves this, this person that is just like more conscious of what it is that they are doing then there's so much potential that we can create when we begin, begin when we begin putting that collective intention that collective visioning yeah, together the home team. Yeah, yeah, really. And I think, so for anybody listening to this, like, start, like, literally, like, write down, like, on a piece of paper, like, what are your skills? Like, what are things you're good at? Because there are things you're good at that I'm not as good at, so to speak. And and in that way, like, those are the things that you can begin to build upon, and those are the things that you can bring into this world to, to share with other people. And, and if you want to create, like, a fancy name for yourself, then totally, like, I encourage you to get creative with it. Like, being creative is definitely some way, it, it's a way to invest into it and that's something that that you talk about t as well is that like actually investing like energy like into this idea into this idea of transforming yourself and and going back to what you're talking about with like the transformational festivals like that's what the the fact that they're called transformational festivals i think is incredibly just bang on because that is it's just settled in the last couple of years of what to call it I, i like it too yeah yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, yeah, like for, for for me, like just going back to the people, okay, like there's, okay, so a lot of people are going through the society right now and we can observe how they put on a variety of different masks. And this, in most cases, is unconscious. So people are sort of like, you know, who they are when they're with their friends, who they are when they're with their lover, who they are when they're talking to their parents, dot, dot, dot. But in often cases, it's often like this process of just like reaction, but not necessarily totally being conscious of what it is that they are in that present moment, who it is that they are, who it is that they're choosing to be at that present moment, because it might not be entirely a choice. But when you sort of step back and you realize that you yourself, going back to the massive multiplayer online game yeah. analogy metaphor, like you are not the character in World of Warcraft. Like you are the player sitting at the computer entering in the keyboard strokes and the mouse clicks and the input that chooses like what the, where the character goes next or who the character talks to next or what they what spells they cast yeah. next sort of thing. So the difference is that as we begin to become more conscious, it's not that we 
just nullify ourselves into like just like none of these other masks that we had on, but rather we begin to realize who our authentic self is, and then from there we begin to like sculpt more variety to who it is that we can choose to be at any moment. So you can still be that person who is you when you're with your friends. You can still be that person who is you when you're talking to your parents, but just being like more conscious of the choice that you are having at that present moment. So, but I mean, yeah, like see, I'm sure. Do you you're just running your own guy, not ahead, letting yeah. it run itself. You know, just just yeah. watching your watch. I always tell people if you want to learn to manifest, quit smoking cigarettes. It's not because uh, you know tobacco is bad for you, but like making yourself control your own avatar and actually like not just mm-hmm. watch yourself do something, but like making yourself make conscious choices and mm-hmm. decide what you're going to do. It really strengthens your willpower mm-hmm. and. Um, yeah, I I think that, you know, I used to think of it as, like, I don't know if you ever played Magic the Gathering, but it's sort of like, you know, you have a whole bunch of little parts of yourself that are, like, cards in your library, and then, you know, at any given time, you can have certain ones in your hand. So maybe now you're the romantic lover guy, right? Maybe now you're the warrior, and maybe now you're the engineer. And it's not like you have to get stuck in, oh, I'm playing this character, you know. It's just to always be making conscious choices of who am I wanting to be in the world right now. And, um, you know, not making it be fake, like I said, making it be, right. be you, you know, you don't want to, like, make up something fake. You want to find out who you are by looking at all of the people that, like I said, you admire from history or from fiction and what are all of their traits and what do you, you know, what do people say about you? Get, have your friends, you know, write down adjectives for you. Have them write down, yeah. like, five positive ones and two negative ones and see, you know, how that fits with your score mm. <laughs> yeah 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 exactly and 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 you know like even using uh like class classification so i mean what we were talking about like for me like my class classification among other things like i refer to myself as a techno ninja wizard so like right. i i use like the concept of wizardry the concept of like yeah you're a neogonzo journalist and the Neo Gonzo journalist. So, I mean, uh, multiple, multiple, multiple hats is what I think of it as. So, I mean, instead of putting on masks and hiding who you are, rather it's like you're putting on a hat and you're stepping onto the stage and you're like playing another role on the stage. So, I mean, you're not hiding anything of who you are. Like, if anything, you're just accentuating who you actually are is kind of the idea. So, and it involves a lot of questioning within it. It involves, like, a lot of reflection. But as you begin to, like, take those steps, like, you just begin to develop more confidence. You begin to connect and, and create, like, more genuine, like, friendships with other people. And then they start doing that, too. And then, like... It, again, it just sort of like helps boost everyone. But that said, going back to what we were talking about, um, even in terms of like the abilities that we have within this reality, like one thing that I want to talk about is um, some of my own personal experience with like some practical magic. And so like with practical magic, one of the ways that you can sort of break it down to is uh, kind of like what, what T-Fair was saying, like this reality responds to input. Like this matrix, this holographic matrix, it responds to input. So that input can be our thoughts, but also that input can be our actions. But something that is very interesting and it's very specific is that when you write something down on paper, something happens. Like something where like you're opposed to an idea simply being on your head. If you were to write that down on paper and observe it with the conscious perception, it triggers something. Like it, it, it runs an additional program. So what is really cool is like when you actually start an example of practical magic, and I've talked about this in past episodes, but I'll just reiterate it real quick. An example that you can do is like write out a sentence, and the sentence would be something that you want to accomplish or something that you want to bring into your life. So as an example, it can be like something material like I want a new car or like I'm looking for a new job or something. And then what you do is that you break down that sentence into a symbol. And one of the examples of how you can do that is that you re- you remove all of the vowels from the sentence so it's just a string of consonants and then you remove the repeated consonants so you only have about like seven or eight letters and then you combine those letters into a creative symbol and then you add spirals and you make it look magical you make it look your own and then you spend a little time like meditating on it so to speak and you put your intention into that symbol and now at this point any time that you see that symbol in your reality, it's going to subconsciously or consciously remind you of what that symbol is for you. And then each time you see it, it's going to like help bring that reality back into place. 
So I mean, I think oh, it's like, I really cool. Like, for, yeah, exactly. Totally yeah, like that. yeah. Tell it's us about like your experience. Them. Yeah, with with symbols, like how we can use symbols to as part of our superpowers. Well, um, for me, well, there's two things. The way that you were talking about with the sigils, when there's something that I'm trying to manifest, I come up with a simple symbol for it so that I can draw it everywhere and so that I can have a little symbol for it on my altar because that one thing, it's, it's better for me if it's not a word because that brings you to a certain thought that it's it's the entire gestalt of what that thing is that I want. And every time I see it, it brings up the whole feeling of that. And I draw it up on, you know, I bring chalk around with me and dry erase markers and I just like to mark things up in public. <laughs> <laughs> um and then the symbol in for the avatarism thing, I think there's a thing too, like, you know, when you sort of take on a new character, I feel like there's some kind of little thing. You know, like people have a wedding ring that it just always reminds them, oh, I'm, you know, always playing this game. Or I dress way up. You know, a lot of people do. I think as we're living further into the virtual where people occur more as their superheroes sort of dressed up, idealized selves, we're going to be seeing more and more of that. But, like... You know, you can't always wear your whole superhero outfit to your job at the bank or whatever. Um, so if you just have one little symbol that is with you that reminds you, oh, yeah, you know, this is who I am all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like just something that keeps representing you to who you're trying to be can be useful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like it reconnects you to that portal um, to help you connect with that part of yourself, like to activate like that. Yeah, so, I mean, for me... <clears throat> Um, uh, to, to give a specific example, something that w- is really cool and I've had like a, it is totally like a part of my life now and all my friends or a majority of my friends can, can verify that this, they've experienced this as well. It's demonstrated and, it, and they've been a part of my reality when things have played out in a certain way. But, and I encourage anybody to like, this isn't something I own. So, I mean, if this works for you, if you resonate with this and try working with it, cause it definitely works for me, but it's the idea of working with the specific number of nine, six, so for me, like the number nine six is just something that I always thought was really cool. Like I, I just I just saw the symbol and like I saw nine six as a number, but then I saw it as a symbol. So I mean, you sort of have like the one circle up top and the other circle down below, and then you kind of got like the hoops on it. And to me, it really represented like the kind of the yin and yang. It, it, to me, it was like synonymous with the yin and yang symbol. But then I also like took it further, and then I started re- referring to it as like intention in and purpose out, and just like as above, so below, and and really Really anything but what I actually did is that I took the 9-6 symbol and I tattooed it onto my wrist so again when we were talking about mm-hmm. symbols if you can make it somewhere where it's visible in this case I see it every single day so when I see the 9-6 on my wrist I see it as like a reminder to like align with myself but what is really really cool is that I've actually programmed my reality so that 9-6 appears in my reality when I'm like in sync when I'm in the zone so kind of like with 11-11 I see 9-6 in ways that are aligned with my intuition. So an example of like the ways how it will happen with me and my buddies is that I could tell them about this ahead of time and then we'll be like walking down the street together and then all these cars are going past us, like so many cars, and then I'll just look up for like one second and catch one license plate and the one that I look at is 9-6. And within that I mean, moment, I'm just like, bam, like intuition, like on the ball, I'm in the right place, awareness, keep moving forward kind of thing. No, I mean, like, see, it's the thing. I know the exact thing that you're talking about and the streetlight thing and whatever and like stuff like that sometimes it's hard to tell because like I said I read Illuminatus in high school I had the 23 enigma happened to me like 11 11 you know and my friend was like roll another number on a dice and start obsessing about it it's amazing that you know you'll suddenly start seeing it everywhere because you know you don't see it when it's not there and you know blah 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 but the kind of stuff that I have seen manifest so specific you know it's not that it, it's not just oh well you see every combination of numbers every day and your subconscious points it out to you and it's you know happens to be the one i mean you, if, if it, the thing is is when you're seeing it if it happens to be in a moment like if you're just exactly in a moment you look down and it's that like then that's what I, then that's when i think that it's it you know it's so hard to tell what what's mm-hmm. really the thing and what's yeah just your mind going like oh yeah look at the corner of your eye you know the clock is the clock yeah. is like this or whatever. It's, human beings will start picking out patterns and random numbers, but that doesn't mean that everything that looks 
patterned as random. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, I, I, I intentionally, like, don't get, like, super excited about it. Like, sometimes I'll just be like, okay. You know, like, I just observe it in, in, in a way that it's just like, what does it mean? Like, it means, like, everything, and yet it means, like, nothing. But at the same time, like, I think it's a really cool idea in the sense that it's, like, me communicating with myself beyond the present moment. Right. So it's, like, me as the universe talking back to myself. So, I mean, right now I'm Brendan, but I'm also, like, everything around me. And then, like, when I see those moments and when they're really, like, at that right place at the right time, I'm just like, all right, cool. And then, like I said, usually that refers to, like, me kind of, like, being in in sync or just, like, keep – or just – be aware it brings awareness to my present moment or, or at the very least it just brings gratitude and i'm just like because often like the last one of the most recent times that i did it like i was just on my way to go do free hugs and then like that's when i saw like nine six just as i was getting there so i was like all right cool like this is going to be that was like kind of foreshadowing that i was doing something and i received like recognition from the universe to say that like yes you were like in your path, you're on right, the right path yeah. kind of thing. So, yeah. Well, the yeah, universe is like a mirror, you know. You're, you're just because totally, you're, yeah. you're thinking of a certain poem and then you open up to that certain poem. I don't know. That's not what I mean. It's a message for you. It just means the universe is reflecting you. It's reflecting what was already in your mind. You know, pe- people get this idea that, like, oh, once you start having synchronicity and manifestation, you're on the road to enlightenment. That's how you can tell that you're doing enough yoga or whatever. And it's like, Dude, you ever know a jet personally? Nobody's going to bring drugs to this guy's house at 4 o'clock in the morning, but they do like, over and over again. They do because he thinks about it all day long. He's not enlightened. He's just focused. You know, some of it's just practical. Some of it's just, like, really learning to keep a single-minded focus. Mm-hmm. Definitely, um, definitely. I think it helps if you are more enlightened. You know, like I said, I think there's a few things about it. I think that it helps if you're happy. Yeah, um, that's a really good point. Yeah, just accentuate I on think, that. I think that if you're, and again, this is just my opinion, you know, my study from me and the 10 best manifestors I've ever met talking about it, going, how is this, okay, how is this for you? And they have these stories too, and nobody would believe them unless they'd had the same thing happen to them. And the happier, the better. Like, super wide open, heart chakra, blasting out, totally in love with the entire universe, you can move mountains. That's why these guys who are like that, it's just, if it just flows around them like water, basically. Um, and people always say MDMA is a manifester. I think that it's just having your heart chakra held open with a freaking crowbar that's the manifester. And sometimes that helps do it, but it's just the fact that you're open. You have more bandwidth or signal strength or something. And then, I mean, you don't have to be happy if you're resolved. You know, there's people who are manifesting it. It's just that, like when you're happy, you ring like a bell, right? You don't have, you don't want one thing in one level and another thing on another level. Like say that, you know, your your brains are making an A note and your guts are making a B flat, right? An A and B flat are both perfectly good notes. But, you know, they're not harmonizing with each other, so you're not sending out a clear signal like you're interfering with your own signal. So when you feel at least, you know, resolved with yourself, hopefully happy, you know, you you want the same thing on every level, then it rings out. And then the another thing is, like, being cheat up. Like, if you're, you know, the ways to cheat up, if you're dancing or, you know, you've just energized, you're running as many bolts as you're ready for, you can feel the force, whether it's, you know, psychedelics or yoga or sex or... You know, there's so many things that, you know, martial arts, uh, flow arts brings this up. Dancing is a great one. Um, mm-hmm. It, I think that you have also then more of whatever it is, bandwidth or signal strength or something, when you cheat up, when you're happy. And then it's a resonance thing. So if, you know, you're, if there's other people who are also in tune with you, um, who are also wanting the same thing, I think it scales up at more than, you know, one plus one. I feel like, you know, one plus one is greater than two in this case. Um, And then, you know, getting everybody sort of on the same rhythm, that's why, this is what I was talking about at Burning Man. I saw that. Did they lose you? Hello? Yeah, we're still here. Okay, so they're cool. Um, sorry. What I was talking about at Burning Man was, you know, if you look at these big dance scenes, um, 
as if you've never seen him before, as if you were just an alien uh, checking it out. You say, okay, what are they doing? They're getting together, and they're dilating themselves wide open. They're dilating all of their chakra systems wide open, and they're doing this big, strange kinetic meditation together. And they're all getting themselves super, super happy, like blown, blown open with bliss happy. And they've got this huge speaker system, so it's actually in training everybody's body to the same rhythm. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what is it? It looks to the tea fairy like a blue ribbon manifestation machine. If you know, because it has all of the things, it has all of the things that work. It's you know, it's happy, it's open, it's resonant, it's together, and you know, people feeling like themselves and you know, blasting out their archetypes. And I, th- I think that Earth Dance is ahead of us on this. I'm certainly not the first person to think of this. That, you know, if we could get everybody on the same beat, like, wanting the same thing, it would probably be... I mean, this is psychedelic superhero stuff right here. You know, if we could get everybody who's out there dancing or just a bunch of people just to sometimes be rocking it for for saving the world, for just making it through this historical bottleneck and moving on to, you know, even better, bigger, better, more rich games where more players can have a more complexly fulfilling experience, you know, to break on through to the other side. If we can get through this next hundred years, we have a decent chance of the next hundred thousand years. You know? And I feel like part of the trick to it is feeling like you already have it. Definitely. Like, if you just, like, feel the feeling of already having it, and I sort of imagine that as tuning into my own future self who already has it, who's already made it to the other side or to, you know, our future Mm -hmm. collective selves, those kids that are dancing on the other side. And I feel like I just sort of reach out to the future in which we made it and resonate with it. It's like it pulls me in its direction. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's a huge dance thing to be done. If if, we, if people could just spare a couple of brain cells out there, out there pumping it to just go, hmm. yes, 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 to the future, we're going to make it. Like just believing that we're going to make it, celebrating the fact that we're going to make it, like in yeah. mass. I think it would probably be a really freaking fantastic magic trick. I mean, it really might make a difference. Yeah, like I, I like I like what you um I think you said in your your hacking the game uh presentation but the idea that like live as far into the future as you can. It's kind of something that you said specifically. And yeah, I really like I really like that idea. So <laughs> Oh, yeah, that was about, you know, why do I dress up a lot and stuff because I think as we as the virtual becomes more um seductive, people will be spending more time there. And I think also be spending more time in environments like Burning Man where people really occur as their avatar. You know, it's very virtual out there. Have you ever been to Burning Man? People Me sort of like, know. yeah, they people just sort of pixelate in out of the dust and they occur as this sort of elevated version of themselves, yeah. the way that people dress up. And, and so they behave that way as sort of an elevated version of themselves. And I'm actually really looking forward to Google Glass because yeah, yeah. of this. Um, it, it's not yet. I mean, it's generations of Google Glass away, but I think that it's implied in the technology that eventually, you know, you'll be able to see somebody just sitting on the bus, and they're, you know, they're that squishy guy, whatever ethnicity, whatever age, you know, something about their socioeconomic status. But like, if they're wearing this one necklace, when you put your glasses on, you can see their mermaid self or their warrior princess self or something, and it just gives you a whole other layer of information about this person, you know, um, here's here's what accidents of nature have got them, and here's what they look like to themselves on the inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, you know, what they want to look like to you, so there's layers of deception there, too. Yeah, that's true, that's true, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like, um, one of the things that, uh, again, just going back to the talk that, that you said, that I think is just really worth, like, repeating and repeating and repeating, and it's just such such a psychedelic superhero thing to say, but, like, you, you just say, like, I am the universe being awesome, and I think I even to use that, awesome. even to use that as, like, a mantra, something that we can repeat to ourselves, like, daily, and to, and to really embody, like, how can you be the universe being awesome, like, how can That's you, like, true. step outside of your door and, and just just create, like, you know, change someone's life and stuff like that. Like, create that it mission. Great. It came from the superhero workshops where me and Alex actually had to push people out of airplanes to, you know, give them an intense enough experience to feel like that they had, you know, actually changed for a change. So, you know, they started out, oh, I'm a computer programmer from 
Podunk, Ohio, and, you know, five days later, we did all these empowerment exercises and whatever. And then they're standing in the doorway of the airplane screaming this stuff. I am a living God, conscious of my power. <laughs> I am the universe being awesome, you know. And then push them out, and they have an intense enough experience that they're, you know, it reprograms them for a second. Mm-hmm. And it gives them a chance to go forth and, you know, go forth and make awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and reprogramming I think is like definitely like what we are doing. I mean, we're we're getting rid of the old programs. We're getting we're and going back again to to like the uh the metaphors with the technology and stuff. Like we're we're defragging our minds. Like mm-hmm. we're defragging and emptying out like our old cookies and and old malware that is like no longer serving us that we picked up from like some other like you know some other places that we were visiting or just like from the TV that we were watching. Yeah, well, or, exactly. I say TV, all these little viruses get in your head. How many times have you heard that commercial jingle in your mind? And you're like, wow. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Definitely, definitely. It, cool. it says, Libby's, Libby's, Libby's on the live, live. Like it says that. Yeah. <laughs> so what are some I, I was just going to say actually for, so for if anybody wants to call in uh, please do so now and, and we can still get some other people calling in and, and if anybody has any generic questions please PM Paradigm Shift Radio into the live chat and I'll keep an eye open for those as well but uh, just in a kind of a, like a general question like what are some other physical things that people can do to help like uh, activate like sort of energy within themselves you know like, like if someone were to ask like how do i like open up my chakras or so to speak because i mean you're a big proponent of like the flow dancing and, and things like that yeah like, how, like how does that help how does that help you and why would you recommend it to other people oh my gosh i don't know what i would do without it i mean everybody has their thing it's probably the same for people who play a musical instrument or you know but it for one thing it balances the left brain and the right brain the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere have to work together and so it sort of builds up the white stuff in between. So if you're a process thinker, it brings up your creative thinking. And if you're a creative thinker, it brings up your process thinking. And it's a great meditation. It moves the body. It stills the mind. It's good for balance, coordination, dexterity, and self-esteem. Just being able to goose your own dopamine system. We've been doing it for people in recovery. You know, halfway houses, people just live in together, trying not to take drugs all the time and just you know, teach them how to do staff or whatever so that they can just get out there and, you know, like I said, goose their own dopamine systems whenever they need to because you're you're only about 10 minutes away from, yeah, I got it, <laughs> and forever. You know, even the best people I know, if they stayed, sat there for half an hour and tried to do something, they would have that, yeah, I got it feeling. Yeah, exactly. You, you never yeah. get to the bottom of it. And uh, it's a good chill up. It's a good chill down. It's uh <laughs> Yeah, it's every it's every kind of good for yeah. you. Yeah, it's definitely. Good physical workout. It's a good energetic workout. It's a good mm-hmm. way to slow yourself down. Even when I come home really hyper, sometimes I'll just spin really slow, and you're like, oh yeah. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it definitely just like brings us into that space, like whatever that space is that uh, we can. Well, it's it's, what, it's the martial arts jollies thing, you know. It's the it's all it has all that ninja matrix Jedi kung fu Absolutely. feeling yeah. that martial arts has without any of the posturing about maybe we're gonna fight, you know. Oh no, honey, we're not we're playing up here. We're <laughs> training. The village could be attacked, you know. And this is like, no, no, we're just playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a big proponent sure. of play. I I think play more adult play. Is one of the things that could really save the world. I know you do that too. You go out there and try to engage people and get them to play. Get them yeah. To play your characters, not NPCs in their own life. You know, just walking by. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People, people. That, that's a good point. Like, yeah, like NPCs is kind of a gaming term. Non-player for, uh, characters. Non-player yeah. characters. So people like, are being run by the machine or by the dungeon yeah. master. They aren't really real people. They're just there to be like the bartender or whatever. You know. <laughs> Yeah, then, but, uh, under, but underneath them, there's like still that spark within all of us. But I mean, well, that's, that's where, the thing. I used to doubt the, it. Yeah. You know, I, my 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 manifestation situation was so intense for me as a young woman. I seriously thought I must be the the only registered player or whatever, and that this is all for my benefit. Because how could I manifest something that requires a cast of thousands to be on their mark regularly? You know, and then later I thought, well, okay, you know, maybe it's just me and my small group of friends or other, you know, a few other people. There's a player character class and the machine's running everybody else. 
And then finally my best friend said to me, well, if you don't know which way the universe is, you can bet that it's probably the coolest way. Hmm. And it would be cooler if there were no NPCs. Like, it would be cooler if everybody was a real player, you know, was would have the potential to be. And like you said, you know, sleeper cells or awakening cells or whatever, I think a lot of them do have that potential, and they just need to be, you know, woken up to their own possibility. And I think a lot of people are, you know, I think it's part of the difference between the television culture and Internet culture. It's more participatory, and people are being more present still. Look what people just like me are doing. Yeah, I think that's like that's like one of the best uh, things that we can do uh, for other people is to like be um, something that they can look to as an example. And I mean, not even like you know, if you want to use the term, if you want to use the term role model or whatever, like that's not totally necessary. Oh, but God, ma- no, no, rather, but rather to be seen. <laughs> but rather to be seen as like someone who can help give people permission, like who who can allow people to have, like the term we've used in the past is like permissionaries, which is kind of like yeah. you know like, I, I think that's a good way of saying it because I mean when when we go be- out. Yeah, like when, when when me and my group of like other fellow like psychedelic superheroes in my paradigm shift London community, when we go out and give out free hugs, like there are other people who are like, oh, that's awesome, you know, like why, like maybe I'm gonna do that, maybe I'll do that next week too, or maybe I'll just like be like give a free hug to a stranger or something. So I mean, people need like when the system is so rigid, when the system is so predictable, we need to inject those pattern interference, like the interference oh patterns. God. And then, like, through that act, it just, like, sparks that self-awareness. It, it begins to, like, the NPCs begin to begin to wake up. So, I mean, my mission is to, like, help, like, is to help awaken as many people as I can and, and, and to not be in a rush doing it and to have fun doing it. And, and like you said, like, having a lot of play, like, making a lot of play involved as well. So, yeah, definitely. So, T, I was just going to say, we're going to bring on some callers here. we got a couple of okay, people okay. who I'm sure have a couple questions for you. So we're going to do that. And then uh, I think um, there's a, yeah, there's that song. I actually have the song, like my body is a spaceship. So we we can play that and we can, we can sort of get all excited about it and tell people to dance while they're listening to it. So, <laughs> and then we, uh, we may, we may do a meditation at the end. And I know we haven't totally done an on-air meditation in a while, but I think, I think we'll set aside within the last 10 minutes. We'll make sure that we get a meditation in at the end just to embody some of the things that we've been talking about, but uh, we'll get there when we get there. So for now, I'm uh, going to bring on caller from area code 818 who is actually our buddy Nikolai who uh, he's been following Paradigm Shift Radio for a while so uh, Nikolai if you're ready we're going to bring you onto the air here we go yo can you guys Nikolai. hear me yeah we yeah, can yeah cool, oh hey what's up alright so uh, Nikolai <laughs> Nikolai I'm going to I'm going to throw it Sorry, I'm just going to say I'm going to throw it over to you, Nikolai. Um, I actually I just got to step away from the computer for one second, so you guys are going to be like steering the ship just while I'm gone. I'll be like one minute though. But yeah, Nikolai, right go on. ahead, ask 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 your question, and uh, T, you guys you guys know what to do. So <laughs> I'll be right back. All right, uh, thanks. We take over. <laughs> so um, yeah, it was uh, it's, a, it's a good it's a good uh, pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, oh, thanks. Thanks for. Yeah, thanks for coming. Pleasure to be uh, Yeah, I did watch your video. It was, uh, it was really awesome. It, it made me think about uh, when you said that, like about metaphors and about like belief systems and stuff like that. You know, that was I was honestly really um, boundary dissolving. And uh, yeah, I, I I just you know it, it got me thinking that you know. Because, like, in a way, everything is a belief system. And, uh, you oh, know. Thank you so much. I, it makes me so happy to hear that it's landing for people. I uh, yeah. I encourage everybody to, it's on the page, to listen to the video because it's a lot more, my thoughts are better organized than they are live. I wrote every single word of a 10,000 word speech. Uh, yeah, that, that, that was definitely, <laughs> oh, that, definitely awesome. Um, I was wondering, you, you were talking about um, neo sh- like shamanism earlier, and um, you know how like you went to Burning Man. I was wondering if you were involved. I don't know if if you know the Zando project. Oh, sure, this? I do. I wasn't directly involved this year, but I know a lot of those people. Oh, awesome! Yeah, yeah me too. I, I know a couple. Um, 
Yeah. Well, it was, is awesome. Yeah. I, I didn't go to the Burning Man uh, this year, but I know a lot of people that funded this research. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's really awesome how you, you really need to kind of reintegrate, you know, sort of the uh, shamanism to the society in a way, you know? Well, it's been, you know, it's been better. More and more festivals have some kind of, you know, cosmic hair or sanctuary or Zendo project or a place where people can go, you know, where people know instead of taking lost strippers to the rangers or, you know, to the medical uh-huh. tent, you know, you can take them to where there's people who have some experience with calming people down and re-centering and reorienting people. When I was at Flipside a couple of years ago, I just, it's like a Burning Man regional in Texas. And a lot of the interactivity revolved around giving away free alcohol. So, you know, people would take a bunch of psychedelics and then while they're waiting for them to come on, they walk around and get shwilly. And they were coming into the sanctuary. You know, there was just a line, hi, I'm on a 16 second loop and I ended up working in sanctuary for three days. It was, Actually, it's yeah. pretty awesome, but I think it's it's more and more necessary. And some festivals are kind of like, well, if we have that, then we're gonna have to admit that there's drug taking here. And like, well, yeah. go, go down and look at the dance floor. <laughs> like, what do you think is happening? Yeah, um, totally. I mean, it, it's good to have like people, you know, sort of like uh, neo shamanism, if I must say, you know. That it's not like neo shamanism, but it's like people that could like help you out and like professional, you know, psychologists or you know people that have experience in that just uh, help people out in general. And like you were saying, uh, if you saw a guy, you know, struggling with his own ego on you know a heroic dose or something, you know, oh, man. you just yeah, you you just help him out. You got to, man. Great. You know they're in there for like a billion years. <laughs> yeah. Just letting you, letting you guys know I'm back, but don't let oh, me yeah, interrupt yeah. you guys. What else? No, I've been pushing for. Actually, you reminded me of something. You know, when I've been giving speeches in the Amazon um, for a few years, and I've been talking about how awesome it would be if we could get a real school together there, because you know, there's a lot of questions around is it a good thing for people to you know be doing ayahuasca in the west and how many ceremonies are popping up all over and whatever but i don't think it's a valid question is is this going to happen you know it is going to happen and i feel like there's a need to have quite a lot of people trained and you know we're not going to have something that turns out you know shamanism degrees in two years because that's insulting and ridiculous but if there could, you know, you have to go live with the guy in the combo for years in the jungle and all the yeah. dietas and stuff. But, if, but you know, if there could just be a school where people could go and they could have shamans from a whole bunch of different traditions that work together, and this is the problem. There's not a lot of working together there right now. Um, I, where they I, say, I, I, okay, well, we can have Icarus 101. We can have Botany of the Amazon. We can have, yeah. you know, Defense Against the Dark Arts classes. We could have brain science classes and you know they could learn about some of the here's what's going on in your brain version and you know they could learn from each other even because most of these practitioners have tremendous vertical acceleration in their own personal tradition and they don't know what they're doing five miles over there that you know is a variation on this kind of thing and then we could actually say okay so here's the class of students and we're going to try to make these little bubbles of protection today and like Raise your hand if you can see this shit and, you know, see if we can get people just to have enough of the basics and they can go out and, you know, they're not a shaman. They just have, like, an open water certification or whatever. They can go out with somebody with, you know, their same experience level or less and probably do more good than harm. Um, Um, I think it's really needed. Yeah, I was going to say that, you know, they're actually in Spain right now. Um, They're doing studies while talking about ayahuasca. They're doing studies with, you know, uh, synth- synthetic harmaline and uh-huh. DMT, uh, which for, for those uh, listeners that don't know what harmaline is, is uh, what makes DMT orally yeah. available. It's like to, pharma to, waska, uh, basically. Yeah, to go to the brain pharma. barrier. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. Yeah, and, uh, you know, there, there's like shamans, basically, that they, they, they're... 
shamans from the Amazon that actually refuse to work with, you know, this capsule because it's like synthetic because, you know, shamans have been working with plants. Well, they, you know, they say years. that it's the plants do it. And then on the other hand, Maria Sabina, who was a Mazatec mushroom shaman, you know, they gave her a psilocybin pill and she said the steward of the mushrooms in the little pill, so it may, you know, vary yeah. from shaman to shaman. I know they definitely, you know, say that it's a relationship with the plant. You know, the plant spirit itself oh, yeah. is part of the Amazonian bit. Yeah. But I know plenty of people who have done farmawaska, and they said, oh, I went there. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, <totally>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I agree. I mean, I, honestly, you know, um, yeah, my personal opinion is just, you know, uh, you know, it's it's really the kind of like the molecule itself is the core or the mind of this, uh, or the spirit, if you may say, you know, the of the plant, you know, which which makes it in a way that, you know, uh, I I don't know, it, it makes like the the magic mushrooms, like the word magic is like the psilocybin, basically, right? I mean, well, but, is it or is it the spirit of the mushroom? We don't, you know. Yeah, totally. Mm. But, hey guys, yeah. okay, I just. Or sorry, don't let me interrupt, yeah. but I just had a question from the oh, chat. Yeah. Go okay. All right, okay, I just had, like, sort of a generic question from the chat, and, because, uh, like, the term shaman has been coming up, and someone was just asking, like, what what does shaman mean? Which, you know, I think maybe we've been using it sort of uh, so often that we don't even think to define it, but just going back to, like, the basics and stuff, like, if yeah, I were to Yeah, that's probably why it, I don't use it for myself. I, it's, yeah, yeah. I mean, shaman, shaman to me is kind of, like, synonymous like with teacher and a teacher who is in particular familiar with or has a personal relationship with uh like the plants uh of like the in this case you know like ayahuasca like the amazon and stuff and also like the spirits of like the plants so but but not even just plants i mean a shaman can be like person who is just uh, in in tune like aware of like their environment so i mean someone who can be like you know kind of like in pocahontas where like you know like the the colors of the wind and, and the tree has a spirit and and stuff like that so getting into the idea that like everything has like a, an energy to it and everything actually has uh in some way whether it's like on this dimension or another actually has like an intelligence to it and a shaman depending on like how in depth they are like is someone who is just like capable of sharing some of the knowledge from like the objects not the objects so like the other um, non-human entities like around us, and and just being yeah. able to like pass that on to well, we that's can. Possible. That's part of it is the shaman part of it. The bridge. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. they're able to yeah, bring yeah. it home. They're able to bring it home. Like a lot of people can go out and have the experience, and then come back and say, as oh, you know, say geometry and pretty lights and giant bugs. You know, if you can come back and heal people, or you can come back and say, you know, it's going to rain tomorrow, or you know, anything useful, then you've been able to bring something useful back to the tribe yeah. with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, Fun it fact, it actually, uh, the word shaman originally or, originated from uh, Siberia, uh, which which is in Russia. And I'm for those of you that don't, that don't know, I'm actually Russian. And, uh, yeah, I, I actually have uh, ancestors that used uh, sort of certain... Uh, plants not not particularly uh psilocybin mushrooms to my oh, you know, yeah, I, I don't know. Know. Is in Siberia, right? yeah yeah and, but they used the uh, amanita muscaria which is kind of like the mario mushrooms i don't know if you guys have yeah, be careful with that stuff man <laughs> yeah yeah it, it, it's pretty dangerous but the, the way how they did it was just so bizarre i mean they they you know, they took it and, you know, they peed. Yeah. They urinated Fil- out the... Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they urinated the muscimol and they would do that, like, it would be like a ritual. They would urinate it again and again and again and again, and it's, it would be like, it would be passed down to generations, you know, that same sort of... Um, the change water uh, of life. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pretty um, easy, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's good. And now you know. So. Knowing how to battle. Knowing how to battle. G.I. Joe. Um, anyway, yeah, okay, I, so I, I, I haven't, I haven't say, drank the piss of my ancestors. Oh. But. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, whatever works. Whatever works. Yeah, right? yeah, I guess. 
Um, but I mean, you know, like it, kind of what we were talking about, like I think uh, getting into like these these psychedelic states, like whatever they be, it's really interesting because it opens us up into a place where we can communicate with our ancestors. Like that's kind of yeah. one of the, the, the very interesting things that, that I sort of like have been drawn to. And, and again, like the psychedelic state is also like within our dream space as well, which is totally like something very, very, very much worth pursuing and something we talk about here on Paradigm Shift Radio is like the lucid dream and the astral projection side of things. I'm getting but, so into it right now. I'm seriously, I got my little dream journal. Yeah, I was going to ask. Wait up, I'm going to write it down. About that. Yeah, that's yeah. one of yeah. you. Oh, yeah. well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it goes, it goes better if I smoke less pot. The, the, um, yeah. But it's... It, this, I think that we're going to get it at the same time. By the time we get fully immersive virtual reality metaverse, we're going to realize that it came already preloaded mm-hmm. and that, you know, we have this available to us. I think that if we really got into lucid dreaming, we wouldn't need to take drugs. Because mm-hmm. you can ask it. I've totally had, you know, drug experiences happen in my dreams where full on, you know, not like I'm able to normally imagine yeah. it. And, yeah. you know... If you could, if, I mean, if somebody said all you had to do was work like a dog for six months to have your own holodeck, you'd do it, right? <laughs> I have a friend who says that he was in jail for a number of years for moving medicine, like three or four years. And he said the only way that he could validate, you know, an aesthetically acceptable universe in which this happens is if he gets some ridiculous superpower out of it. And he just got decided to get devoted to lucid dreaming. And he said he sucked. He wasn't like a giddy <clears throat> superstar. He just remembered like five minutes worth of dreams from his whole life, you know. And he worked on it until he got it. Now he has 20 hours of just like the most impossible, never any story, like amazing stuff. And he can meditate in his dreams and he can practice in his oh, yeah. dreams. And it's like, it's right there. He's just telling you because he's like, it's right there. If I can do it, you can do it. Yeah, and, uh, definitely. Have you, guys heard about, about it? Um, have you guys heard about holotropic uh, breathing? Yeah, I've tried it. Got yeah, it, you know, the the, <laughs> the the guy who basically invented this concept, Stan Lefkowitz, uh, you know, he was working with, uh, you know, in psychoanalysis. And it's just fascinating. He, he did, you know, early kind of LSD studies, and, you know, he, he just got founded by universities and stuff like that. And then, you know, LSD became illegal and and he he basically um from that realm he in, uh he just like wondered how could we kind of uh how could we achieve it without the compound, you know? And so basically he had, you know, he made this kind of group of uh people that, you know, practice holotropic breathing. And, uh, you know, it's just... I mean, you just, can get high from breathwork, pranayama, holotropic breathing, absolutely. You know, there's, mm-hmm. like I said, there's, there's a bunch of ways to, you know, expand yeah. your consciousness. People hang themselves from hooks, you know. I I, uh, I try to go the least painful possible way. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And and again, just like reiterating, like I think like exploring the dream space, pursuing like that path towards lucid dreaming is like one of the most consistent ways to tap into like that psychedelic nature that we already are a part of that we can experience every single night. And and that's something that like, yeah, like I'm I'm. I'm, it's sort of like like a sway of the pendulum that kind of comes and goes, but it's really about like consistency and pattern. And and as T was saying, she's dead and dedicated more time to it. But I mean, yeah, like within the dream space, like we can really really embody like that psychedelic superhero like start doing the things that we want to do and then the next step is to like bring that like into this physical dimension is uh i think a big part of it is to just like take the uh the inspiration the empowerment that that we live within our dream space like whether we're totally lucid or not and to just bring that as an energy that we can share into this dimension and then just uh yeah crystallize it further Definitely. Yeah. So I was going to say, um, we're ticking down on time where we only got about 16 minutes left in the show. So Nikolai, I'm going to have to, uh, just segue you for now, but Bye definitely. Bye, Nikolai. Yeah. It was nice talking thanks to you Thanks for guys. calling in. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. man. And, 
and we'll do uh right. we'll do uh, um we'll we will set up an after party afterwards so for people who are listening to this go to the facebook.com slash paradigm shift radio and you'll see a, a link for the after party which is a google hangout and uh nikolai might be in there himself so uh yeah <laughs> all right okay yeah, nikolai, thanks. it was a pleasure Yay. thanks again man <laughs> glad to hear all right dude i'll talk to all you later right. then. okay peace yeah see you man all right, cool. So, um, like I said, we only got about uh, 15 minutes left in the show, and there is another caller who is on hold, and, and I would like to be able to bring them on. And I and I do want to play uh, the song, the, the My Body is a Spaceship. So maybe we'll just do that. Maybe we'll play the song, and the caller can just sit with us, just uh, if you don't mind just being patient for another minute or two. And then after the song, uh, we'll bring the caller on, and then uh, I'd like to get a meditation in at the end, but but we'll see. So, caller, if you can sort of uh, have a question ready, that would be good. But in the meantime, I really want to share this song because it is, uh, it's actually the first uh, – the video that you created with this song uh, was the first one that I came across that uh, introduced me to, to your work and, and what you were doing. So uh, the song – Yeah, that's all playing slow in the video yeah yeah exactly yeah you're doing your flow and everything and i'll post a link up to the actual original video yeah, yeah, yeah. once this is on youtube um but yeah the song is called my body is a spaceship and uh it's one of your friends is like my performing friend Crystal it wrote it and performed it for my friend b yeah 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 first. cool cool all right so uh um, is there anything else that we need to say or in terms of introducing the song oh. like even just how it ties in with maybe the overall theme i think it's self-evident <laughs> I do too. Okay, so we'll let the uh, words speak for themselves. So uh, enjoy My Body is a Spaceship, and uh, we'll be back in the next couple minutes after that. So uh, stick around. You're listening to Paradigm Shift Radio. Here we go. My body is my spaceship. My body is my spaceship. Oh, 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 oh. Got all the candles on my cake lid. All the candles on my cake lid. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. dawdling anymore we're going to bring this caller on and we'll see we may not get to the meditation but uh we'll we'll do what we can so call it from area code 847 we're going to bring you onto the air here we go hello hey, caller can you hear us this is monica monica i'm calling in from chicago okay. hello. 
Hey. Monica, what hey. would you like to bring to the show? Uh, I don't really have a question, but I just wanted to say something concerning a lot of what we've been talking about. But um, the thing with the superheroes, being your own superhero, that there's just, like, so many possibilities for us to do that. And yeah. I feel like um, even I'm a psych major, so, like, a lot of, like, the neo-shamanism and all that stuff, like, that's super exciting within the field, you know, because people will come to their own realizations that maybe need a push, you know, to the nature of the universe or what have you. And uh, I think that another really important thing to say is, like, chakras in your body. You know, that's, like, one thing um, within my own experience is something I'm really interested in is for people to, like, realize that you have the tools with you to be your own superhero, to heal yourself. You know, I truly believe that you nobody else can heal you but yourself and you have all of that within you. So mm-hmm. yeah, I kind of just wanted to add that. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, even going back to, like, Jesus and stuff, like, I just, I think of Jesus as just, like, this guy who, like, had, like, his chakras activated and was just kind of, like, in tune with that and stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, but, T, do you got anything you want to throw in there? Oh, I yeah, mean, I, I couldn't agree more about how many people are being activated right now. I think we've got more, um, you know more of a mass of this sort of consciousness rising than than there has ever been more people who, you know, identify this way and who, you know, really want to play the game and who really want to bring it and who really, you know, are becoming aware of the sort of extraordinary potential that we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To touch on the Jesus thing that you're saying, like, I came to a realization recently, I saw an image of him at some church, and uh, I was thinking the halo kind of reminded me of, like, the crown, you know, being activated. So it's like, yeah. if you reach that level of just, you know, having all your blockages cleared and just, like, radiating pure light, it'll be, you'll be Christ consciousness, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I've been having, I was going to say about his meditation, I will just put this one thing in about the meditation that I do. I do one called Meta Meta, and it's basically the idea is to really get my nervous system to be able to get into the state of really happy, loving bliss any time that I want to, to have those neurons just associated because I spend time there. Um, and it's so useful to be able to pop back to that state anytime you want to. And first I start out with just loving myself. I said, I got an hour to do this. And if I can't succeed in loving myself like my own baby, just perfectly sweet honey love, then that's, you know, that's all I get. But as soon as I get that feeling, then I go on to loving the people who I have a stash with right now, the people who I'm mad at, whatever, until I feel them like I just love them so perfectly. And then I go on to my nesties, my lovers, my friends, my husband, my best friends, my little communities, and each one until you can just feel it, so you can feel it until it gets bigger and bigger and bigger to the whole, all the different types of people you can imagine, kids in school, you know, people in nursing homes, people cleaning out the street, you know, and just feeling, yes, just love for them, yes. Um, and just recently I was at a just a workshop and, Somebody said, okay, you know, we're going to do this exercise. Just fill yourself with this feeling of joy and bliss and happiness and abundance. And just like you're a method actor and you're trying to make that feeling so that your character will have the feeling. It turns out that it's not that hard to do that. You could do that for 30 seconds. Everybody in the room could do it. If you could just do the meditation of actually making yourself feel that wonderful feeling of already having what you want, and you could practice it for like about five days, you'd probably get addicted to it, like physically. You know, when you start having emotion over and over, your system gets addicted to it and makes you want to keep re-triggering it. So my practice Mm -hmm. lately has just been to spend as much time and just love beautiful, perfect, happy bliss as I can and just try to get my system to, you know, think that that's the home base frequency for it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Like, I mean, that's uh, what I love about, like, meditation is just, like, familiarizing ourselves, like, with that space and then being able to, like, return to it just even with, like, you know, a couple breaths to sort of get us there kind of thing. Well, meditation's neutral, you know, just like, okay, clear your mind and Mm -hmm. don't don't feel passion about anything. You know, this is, I I don't even know if it counts as meditation in that sense because it's really leaning into my, not attachment, you know, but just resonance with and joy about all of these things. 
Mm-hmm. Cool. Monica, was there anything else that you want to touch upon? Because I'm not really uh, sure. Like right now, we're kind of past the uh, point where we could have properly fit in our meditation. So we're probably uh, just going to... Did I mess it up with mine? Sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. But I mean, it's important just to like remind people to... Or maybe we can still... I don't know. Because like... The yeah. tri- I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah. <laughs> Because we only got like we can we can do it. Um, it's just uh, yeah, like not being able to like fit in the full like five minute, but maybe the audio yeah. in the extended version will be able to fit in properly. So, okay, well, let's. Uh, Monica, do you want to lead us in our meditation? I, I'm okay for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I right, just wanted to throw that at you. All right, okay, Thanks, well. Uh, Okay, we can still do it, and then I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna cut the audio about just with like a little bit of time, so we can finish the episode. But the full version will have the full audio. But yeah, okay, let's. Uh, so, um, T, any anything else just to keep in mind as we do this meditation, like what our intention should be, or I don't know what meditation you're gonna put on. I say, you know, your intention is to just feel your feel the brightest version of yourself that you can feel. Perfect. All right, that's Get that's that what we can work glowing. with. Get that crown going. So, okay, cool. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna mute you guys, and then I'll just sort of like walk us into this meditation, and then we'll come back with a minute okay. left. So, all right. Okay. So, thanks, Monica, for calling in. Thank You're you. Awesome. Thank you guys. Okay, no Bye. All right. All right. And uh, T, I'm just gonna mute you as well. Yeah. So. yeah. Bye. Okay. Cool. Thanks. All right. Okay. So again, with no rush, absolutely no rush, we still have the time that we need. So just being able to get ready and prepare ourselves for this meditation. So I'm just going to walk us into this verbally, and then we're just going to be playing the audio for about two minutes. But unless you're listening to this in the future, in which case I'll replace the audio with a proper version. That'll be about five minutes. But So get comfortable, whatever that means for you. Get comfortable in this moment. And we'll connect with the breath. And just keeping in mind that the purpose of this meditation We can bring any purpose that we want into it. But for this one, we're just going to use it to be able to envision that superhero within ourselves. Who is that superhero? Who is that person that you want to be, that you want other people to see, that will allow them to step into their roles as well? So with yourself comfortable wherever you are, we'll just begin with that first gentle inhale and connect with the breath. So gentle inhale through the nose. And gentle exhale through the nose. Gentle inhale through the nose. Gentle exhale through the nose. With each breath, just allow yourself to become relaxed. And also allow yourself to become aware of the energy, the subtle energies moving throughout your body. So again, with the next inhale, just imagine cooling energy coming into your lungs or maybe even warm energy. And with the exhale, imagine that energy moving itself throughout your limbs into the rest of your body. So I'm going to play this audio track and just continue to breathe, continue to work with the rhythm of your breath and continue to visualize, really focus on visualizing the change that you wish to see in the world. So again, gentle inhale, gentle exhale. I'm just going to play the audio now.
slowly continue to follow the rhythm of your breath. Just continue to breathe. And listening to my voice, just be reminded of the fact that we exist within this matrix that responds to the thoughts that we put out. So with every thought that we put, we encode an input. We project something that it is that we wish that we wish to see return to us in time. So again, gentle inhale, gentle exhale. And just be that superhero. Be that change that you wish to see in the world. So I'm just going to bring back T. And with literally only a, about 25 seconds, T, any final words to send our superheroes out on? Oh, carpe awesome. Carpe awesome. It's easy awesome. <laughs> and we can't do it without all of us. That's Warm right. Teams. That's right. We may not have it we may not have it all together, but together we have it all. So <gasps> let's finish it off there. All right. Thanks everyone for tuning in and join the after party hangout. I'm Skull Babylon, ParadigmShiftCentral.com and TFairy.org. So thank you again, T Fairy, for being here with us tonight and oh, you're join welcome. me. Thank you, so. Yeah, and enjoy, join me in saying farewell to the internets for now. So, bye, internet. Bye-bye, bye. Internet. Bye, bye, internet. Bye. Take care. Namaste. See you later. All right. All right, thanks. Thank you for listening to another episode of Paradigm Shift Radio. If you enjoy this show and would like to support it and would like to get more engaged with your local community, then consider ordering some Paradigm Shift buttons. Go to ParadigmShiftCentral.com slash buttons. And of course, if you'd like even more bonus content, join up as a PSR Plus member at ParadigmShiftCentral.com slash PSR Plus. Thank you.